I hope you are motivated to learn because it's very important that we realize how much God can do in this country and in our lives. When we follow God totally, our lives will be raised to a much higher level, not by wisdom of men, but by the wisdom of God and by the power of God. And today I will talk about how to be filled with the Holy Spirit and how to help people to experience the Holy Spirit and how to raise up people to serve God and how to fight against the power of Satan in this country. So it's all very important. But I will first start with the close relationship with God. That, um, because that's the most essential. We want, if we want the blessings from God, it's always our relationship with God and our submission to God. And let God take care of the problems in our lives so that God will be able to work in our life and have a close relationship. So it's very, very important that we realize the most important thing is that we concentrate in God alone. Now there are many people, they think that um, it is, you know, that the way they pray is just, in Jesus' name, cast out demons, demons go away, demons go away, demons go away. And they think that that way, they will fight against Satan. I will explain later. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible doesn't say when you cast out demon from a person, you cast out demon. But we don't just pray to drive out demons. It's most important to have the close relationship with God and take care of problems in our life and that God will fill our life that we are filled with the presence of God and then He will bless our whole life. So there is some different misunderstanding. Uh, I will explain those later. But there are different misunderstanding of the work of the Holy Spirit. And people think they just keep driving out demons and then they will overcome the power of Satan. Uh, then the prayer, what the prayer is, the prayer is directed against Satan most of the time. It's not toward God. It's most important that our prayer is toward God, not toward Satan. It's not fighting, you know, we don't fight against Satan by just casting him out. I, I will explain that later. That's late, you know, in the, uh, maybe in the afternoon, about how to fight against Satan. And from the scripture, what does the Bible say? A lot of times, in the charismatic or Pentecostal movement, people follow certain customs, certain customs that people have been practicing and they did not examine the Bible, What's the, what does the Bible say? So everything we do we should examine from the Bible so we are blessed by God. When we are blessed from, by God then He will bless everything and He will guide the way and open the way to change people's life. Okay, so first I will talk about the infilling of the Holy Spirit. First, I want to say, what is the infilling of the Holy Spirit? The infilling of the Holy Spirit, if I explain it, would be like this. Now, one time I asked someone, um, because a mother told me to pray for the daughter to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So I asked the daughter, who is, who is about 20 years old, um, what do you think the infilling of the Holy Spirit is? And she answered me, she answered me, well, people fall down and then they cry and that's the infilling of the Holy Spirit. I said, that's not it. That how the Holy Spirit can cause some people to fall down, but the in infilling of the Holy Spirit is not falling down. Some people fall down, they just experience the Holy Spirit. I want to distinguish these, these two terms. Can you write this down? Experience the Holy Spirit and being filled with the Holy Spirit are different. Many people experience the Holy Spirit when someone prays for them. And then experience peace and love and power. But it doesn't mean they are filled with the Holy Spirit. When they go home, they might go back to the same old condition. They are not filled with the Holy Spirit. They are just touched by the Holy Spirit. They just experience the Holy Spirit. But when we experience the Holy Spirit, if we keep the presence of God daily, every hour, then we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now to me, my definition of the infilling of the Holy Spirit is 
a very close, intimate relationship with God. In a very simple way, it's a very intimate, close relationship with God. That God can work through the person easily. That God's presence can flow through the person. That God's power can go through the person. So that's one way I define it. That's the close relationship with God. The infilling of the Holy Spirit. Another way I define it is like this. The person who is filled with the Holy Spirit can experience the Holy Spirit anytime he prays. Anytime he prays, he can experience peace, love, joy, power, or the Holy Spirit guiding him or speaking to him. Then he can experience this anytime he prays. That means he doesn't have to wait for half an hour warm up. It's instant. Anytime you think of Jesus, the joy of the Lord comes in to him. Anytime he prays, because his spirit is so open, that his spirit is so open to God, there is nothing blocking his relationship with God. That anytime he prays, the Holy Spirit will fill him instantly. That's the first sign of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. That's the first sign. Second sign is, when he prays for people, many people will experience the Holy Spirit also very quickly. It depends on each person, because some people are more open. They can experience the Holy Spirit instantly. Some people might take more time. So this is how I define the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Now there are other manifestations like crying or laughing. Now all this are good if it helps the spiritual life. But I think the most important thing is to see that he himself can experience God anytime. And he can help people to experience God. And it comes from a close relationship with God. It's not just the manifestation, it's the relationship. That he really honors God, love God, and obey God, and serve God. That's the relationship. Now what's the difference between someone who loves God without experience a strong infilling of the Holy Spirit? Now there are Christians who love God, but they don't experience a strong infilling of the Holy Spirit. What's the difference? Like in the traditional church, there are many Christians, they say, I've experienced God. Uh, they have you no know, uh, for in the traditional church, if they don't spend much time praying, now there are, there are some Christians who spend much time praying and handling the problems in the life, then they can be filled with the Holy Spirit very powerfully too. It depends on the relationship. But in some churches, they just pray like this, oh, God, please forgive our sins. God, please bless our ministry. Bless the church, bless the people. Or oh, give us health and strength, and then they keep finish praying in a few minutes. If they just pray like this, they might have the work of the Holy Spirit, but they are not filled with the Holy Spirit. They, I mean, they are changed by God to a certain extent. The infilling of the Holy Spirit has to come from a strong, intimate, a long-time, long-term relationship with God. It's not just praying for five minutes. It's a praying from the Spirit for a long period of time. So anytime he opens his heart, the Holy Spirit comes into him. So what's the difference? The difference is, let me say this first. In the traditional church, if there are some Christians who pray a lot, who really submit to God, who really love God, the point is, in the churches, they don't lay hands on people. But if they do, they might find people experience the Holy Spirit. Or if they lead people in a prayer to open the heart to God, the people might experience the Holy Spirit. But in many churches, they don't do that. They don't lay hands on people. They don't lead them to enter a stronger and stronger presence of God. What does that mean? You don't just pray, oh, give help to us, give strength to us, bless the church, and bless everyone, forgive our sins. It's not just that kind of prayer. We will enter, oh Lord Jesus, we love you, we worship you, we need you, we hold on to you, you're so wonderful, hallelujah. 
Oh, hallelujah. To spend more time loving God. To lead the people to enter a stronger presence of God. Then he will find more people experience the Holy Spirit. There are two, um, there are a few ways that people experience the Holy Spirit. One way is by laying out of hands. But the person has to keep their presence. Laying on of hands can help a person experience the Holy Spirit. Another way is to lead the people to love God, to worship God for a long period of time. And people can experience the presence of God stronger and stronger. Another way is when people themselves spend time loving God and meditating on the Word of God and, and handling the problems in their life, that people themselves can experience the Holy Spirit. Mainly, it's not just a relationship with the mind. For many Christians, they think they have a close relationship with God when they read many books in the Bible, when they study many books in the Bible, and then they are filled with the Holy Spirit. So they think that the infill of the Holy Spirit is mainly the work of the mind. Now it starts with the work of the mind, but it goes on to the spirit. The whole life and the submission of the whole life for the person to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So some people just you know, in many churches, they just study one book of the Bible and then another book, and then they, they think they are knowledgeable. They're knowledgeable, but they might not be filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit has to take time to worship God in the Spirit and handle all the problems in their life in the long term, and then the person has a constant relationship with God. And also learning how to worship in the Spirit. That's what Jesus said. To worship in spirit and in truth. So what does that mean? There's something very hard to understand for some people. Because it's not just saying, God help me. Now to me, I describe it like this. Many people's prayer is like a prayer of an email. Like they send an email to God. Number point. Point number one, please forgive my sins. Point number two, please help me. Number three, please heal me. Number four, bless my church, bless my ministry. So mainly the prayer is like sending messages to God. So it's the message of the mind. It's a prayer of the mind. And when Jesus said, and the Bible said in Deuteronomy, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength, it's the whole person. That's the key to being filled with the Holy Spirit. But that's something not easy to do. You need to really spend time loving God from the heart and really like God and agree with God in every way in the mind for our mind to be in one with God and then to worship out with the Spirit. Whole person, the whole person. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I need you Lord I depend on you Lord hallelujah so to worship with the whole spirit it takes time to learn and then gradually the person find that he can experience his God's peace and love and joy very quickly that means he's, he's more connected to God and the more he's connected to God the more uh, he's filled with the Holy Spirit now I want to say this shouting helps but shouting is not necessary. And shouting is not the key. It's one way to help. When people shout, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Now, if they shout from the Spirit, it helps. If they just shout with the voice, Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. It's not from the Spirit, it doesn't help. So it's not the voice, it's the heart. It's the Spirit. And some people, because they, it's hard for some people to understand what is worshiping in the spirit, they, they might say, that's too hard, that's, that's not easy. Um, I will say this, a person with a childlike spirit will find it very easy. Like the little child see uh, someone he likes, the little child will be very happy and excited. If we do that when we come to God, God is so wonderful. I love God. I like God. And then we can be filled with the Holy Spirit much easier. Because when we, our spirit is like a child's spirit. 
very simple, very open to God, and really appreciate God and love God, and then we can experience Him. Okay? Now, um, any question? You know, I, because this is a study, learning. So if you have any question, you can ask, and, and then I'll move on to the next points. If you have any question about what I just said. Okay. My question is, what could happen if a person have a quiet time with God, and the Holy Spirit came like a rising wind, offering over him, out of a sudden, he just disappeared? Uh, what did it say? What could be the cause, the reason, why, while you are in a quiet time, out of a sudden, the Holy Spirit came, and offering over a person, and just left immediately? The Holy Spirit can move. Okay. Well, God can do any time, any way He wants. He can just come quickly to a person. And the reason, maybe the person has been open and hungry for God. But why does the Holy Spirit leave instantly? Maybe the person hasn't really opened his heart. And also, we don't measure by the wind or the manifestation. Because when people experience the Holy Spirit powerfully, sometimes they shake, the whole body shakes. Sometimes they might fall down, sometimes they might cry or laugh. And then they laugh for a while and then stop laughing. Does it mean the Holy Spirit has left? Not necessarily. We don't measure by the manifestation. We measure by the inner experience. What happens inside is not what is outside. So don't look at just the outside. It's the inner relationship with God that matters. Did I answer your question? We cannot answer why some people experience the Holy Spirit is heat. Some people experience the Holy Spirit is laughter. Why someone cries? We cannot answer why. Because each person is different. And God works in a person differently. Why is wind for someone? Why is something else? It, we don't have to find the answer for that. The main thing is we know how to keep the relationship with God. We don't have to ask questions, why experience like that? Why I don't experience the Holy Spirit like that? We don't have to ask that question. Because for each person, it's different. And each and even for one person, I experience one day and another day is different. When we first experience the Holy Spirit, usually it's stronger manifestation. Reason is, the Holy Spirit has to clear out something in a person's life. And after a while, when he prays, he just experiences peace. But when he opens his heart, then he experiences joy. And for me, the joy is constant. Anytime I think of God, the joy will flow out. So that, that means the Spirit is more open. So for each person, it's different. Yeah, if I can help. Praise the Lord. Actually, the Lord said He will come and abide with us forever. So there's nothing like coming and leaving us. Now, if you go back to what happened in the book of Acts of Apostles, when the Holy Spirit first came, first came on the apostles or disciples, the manifestations, the wind, around a Christian, and all of a sudden you don't feel that again. The Spirit does not leave, rather He feels, He feels you like you put water in a cup. When you pour water in a cup, what happens? It will be until it feels. The one said, feel me. That means when He comes, He feels you and never leaves you. Praise God. I, I, I love to, I wasn't here when he started, I, I missed a lot. I love to talk of him. He is not that wind. The Holy Spirit is not wind. Neither is he dove or water. He's a person. Are you with me? So when he comes, you may experience the move of the wind. But the wind is not the Holy Ghost. It's a symbol. Are you getting it? The fire is not the Holy Ghost. It's a symbol. The dove is not the Holy Ghost. These are symbols. But I want you to know one thing. It does not leave us. 
the Lord said he will abide with us forever. Forever. Okay, thank you. Now, I want to say this. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit and infilling are two different things. The indwelling is with us, with Christians all the time. When a person is saved, he's born again. The indwelling doesn't go away. But what he talked about is the infilling. It's a stronger presence of God. It's, you know, many Christians, they have the Holy Spirit only to a certain extent. Infilling doesn't mean 100%. No one has the Holy Spirit 100% except Jesus. That He is filled with the Holy Spirit totally. But for all of us, we are only filled to a certain extent. Now that infilling, the Bible says there are two kinds. One is a long-term infilling and one is a, a short-term infilling. And I want to explain this. A general indwelling is generally a lower level. And then for people who are filled with the Holy Spirit, generally the level of the presence of God is higher. And then when he concentrates the prayer, or a whole group of people spend time praying, then the infilling becomes much stronger. So there are peaks. So that's why in some meetings, people will experience the Holy Spirit very powerfully. So we distinguish the indwelling and the infilling, and then uh, and then a stronger infilling. Okay. Yes. Is it possible for someone who has not acknowledged Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior to experience the infilling of the Holy Spirit? Is it possible for someone he may be in the church? Someone, someone may be in the church, somebody who is in the church. Who has not Is it possible for him or her to be? There are people in the church, so called, even called Christians. Is it possible for them to remain in the church? Is it possible for them to be filled with the Holy Spirit without force of all acknowledging Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior? Is it possible for someone in the church who is just a nominal Christian to just receive the Holy Spirit without receiving Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior? No, the relationship with Jesus Christ as Savior must come first okay. or at the same time. It can be at the same time. Some people are saved and feel the Holy Spirit at the same time, but must have the relationship with Jesus before the Holy Spirit can fill him. But the Holy Spirit can touch people, non-Christians. When we pray for them, they can experience the peace and the power of God. But if they don't believe in Jesus, the presence of the Holy Spirit will not stay. The Holy Spirit can come and visit and work on the persons. But if the person doesn't accept Jesus as the Savior, then the presence of the Holy Spirit will not stay. And nominal Christian, only God knows whether he's saved or not. Because some people are barely saved. They're barely saved. Usually Christians who are barely saved, they might, they, they will have the feel, uh, in the presence of the Holy Spirit, but they don't have the infilling. That's why many of their thoughts are secular worldly thoughts. The thoughts are not of God and it's hard for them to experience the Holy Spirit. Okay. 